cleaning my house. Cleaning my house, cleaning my house, cleaning my house. I feel much cleaner. I feel very relieved. I feel like I really got something off my chest and, and it feels good. Well now, how's that for starting a television show? Have you ever seen something so ludicrous and ridiculous? But that's how it is here on J and Beyond the Rocks where um, we bring you an episode which is just entirely devoted just to, to the med, the, hmm, hmm. <laughs> Beyond the Rocks. Go, which, wait, wait a second, go. A show which glorifies the responsible use of alcohol. Say, By uh, teaching you to drink a lot. I said I got a camera up my ass. You look God take big shit. So, hi, and welcome to Jay and Beyond the Rocks, this fine television show that you're watching right now. Yes. It's unfolding before your eyes. We're talking to you from the Bloomington uh, Community Post Office yeah, Station. Down here on 4th Street, here in Bloomington, Indiana, um, in where the we great Midwest of come to check our great Midwest, yes. Yeah, the heartland of America. Yeah. This is our post office box number here. Uh, the zip code is 47402, if you want to know that. And and we, we've got all this mail that has come to us that we just haven't caught up with. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to do some house cleaning this week, some mental house cleaning. Yeah. That's actually the name of this episode, ironically enough, yeah. is mental house cleaning. Or Taking care of business. Like and that. first order of business, we wanted to introduce ourselves. Jay, say um, hi to the folks. Hi to the folks. I'm yeah. Jay um, of this TV show, B and J something. And they often call me B. That's why we call the TV show J and B on the rocks. And now we wanted to present something else. Hey, I was just looking. We've got a piece of viewer mail here um, from some viewer at, uh, on West Gourley Pike here in Bloomington, Indiana. Um, this was sent to us recently. We received it in our P.O. Box number, which you're now seeing on, our, on your screen right now, P.O. Box 3241, Bloomington, Indiana, 47402. Actually, two, as you hear in the antechamber. That was actually me farting the, the word two out my butt. Um, oh. On this toilet. Hummel? Hummel, yes. J and B, we were sitting in our apartment drinking heavily. As we fought over the remote, it fell out of our hands and, and across the room. The TV was on B Cat. Since leaving the couches against the house rules, we watched B Cat. To our great pleasure, it was a J and B marathon. As we watched, we realized something. You guys are a lot like us. You get loaded and amuse us, the home viewer. We get loaded and, well, okay, we just get loaded. <laughs> this is your faithful viewers, Marco, Mike, and Shaggy. So this next uh, letter is sent to us from Joe, um, and uh, we already opened this to, to, to take a look at it beforehand because we didn't want you to be surprised by anything, you know, like a letter bomb or anything. Um, so let's see, this person, yet again, this must be Joe M. Ma because what we have here is a receipt for some CDs, Primus and the Residence, um, a receipt from College Mall, 
Uh, oh, a photograph of someone puking. He's really got a, quite a library of these photographs. But look, this person is doing it responsibly because they're, he's holding his hair back, you see, so that he doesn't get it in the toilet. How disgusting. Um, and uh, gosh, we've got all these receipts from hooks and different places. Wow. Well, well, uh, clearly, Joe M. Ma has, has, has found a theme in his, his letters. He sends us packets of receipts like every week or so. And so uh, with that in mind, we were going to make this next drink for him. So this next drink that we're going to be making is going to be called a same old shit in honor of that uh, old Joe guy. Um, and what you want to do is you want to have your glass here on the back of the toilet. Now make sure that you clean this surface off because there's lots of germs that kind of gather around the toilet, especially if you are like us and you clean the bathroom about, well, when your parents show up, which is about once a year. So um, put about an ounce and a half or two ounces of, of Southern Comfort over some <coughs> ice in a glass, <coughs> excuse me, and then fill it up with coffee. Now, of course, the reason we're using coffee here is because coffee um, stimulates the uh, gastrocolic reflex, um, causing you to take a shit, you know, um, hence the same old shit aspect of this drink, you know. So, here we go. <laughs> well, <laughs> that tastes like shit. Here we go. Oh shit, I, oh, I forgot to wipe, so I'll be back in a minute. So I'm gonna open this piece of viewer mail that we have here, um, sent to us at our P.O. box here in Bloomington, Indiana, which you're seeing on the screen, as you often do in this silly TV show. Dear j and B, I I felt compelled to write and thank you for the bold and inventive programming alternative you provide for the community at large. A late and lofty congrats to B for making the nuptial plunge. Best of wishes, the ceremony was lovely. Just remember the words of Prometheus, time in its aging course teaches all things. Yay. I must also comment that Jay is looking better these days. Change in diet? Any tips? Well, that's kind of interesting that that, that person actually asked about that. We'll show you a little bit, a bit of that in a minute. Um, I still have not heard any response to my fruit idea. What about injecting vodka into grapes? Yum. Well, now this is funny. This person sent us a letter a couple of months ago um, about how to load fruit. And it's kind of ironic because that they sent this letter just now because as you may have seen last week, we had an entire episode devoted to that single letter, how to load fruit. And we'll show you a little snippet of that, of, of us injecting uh, alcohol into grapes right now, actually. It, didn't it fail? Didn't it fail? Yes, it, it uh, actually f was a grand failure, as you just saw. But, um, it, but at least we persevered and got to the end of the show without dying or, or feeling like total assholes. Yeah. yeah. Certainly, it, it made for wonderful entertainment. Though. Yeah, yeah. Now, this person also act asked about my diet. No, it wasn't actually a change in diet, other than just uh, imbibing more and more drugs every day. Um, uh, it was it was that in fact I've gotten on an exercise regimen. So here we go. We're gonna show you some of Jay's exercise regimen. must do when you wake up each day are 10 slide routines. You have to do 10 of them. And they consist of first walking up the slide backwards, doing a flip over the bar, and then coming down. Okay, so you've heard about the 12-step program for recovering alcoholics or mm -hmm. something like that. This is what's going to be called the 12-step program for drug-abusing television icons, okay? And it just involves your simple park pic picnic table bench and everything like this, okay? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Wow. All right, I'll do that again. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
Wow, that's beautiful. And you have to make a silly face on 11, 12. Okay, do, do 11, 12 for that's us. That's the icon part, okay? Yeah. 11, 12. And a one, one two, two, three, three four, four, five. five. Oh, he cheated. Damn you. Damn. Six. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You know, your stretches are essential. So these exercises that I'm exercises that I'm doing here for you on television are among the most difficult exercises in the world, but I'm doing them for you here on television on JNB on the Rocks because I care about your health and fitness. You know, responsible drinking is what it's all about, and health is part of responsibility. So hats off to um, us. Wow. This is the freakiest looking letter I've ever seen. Look at the back on the look at the back on this thing. Oh, wow. It says, one of the funniest affecting stories to bolt out of the gates for a long time. Oh, and look. It's... The saga of J and B. Oh wow. So these people uh, yeah. are friendly. Broke. <laughs> Celebrate the woman. Wait, Double wait. your pleasure. Oh, well, that's... Give in to your wanderlust. <laughs> so here we go. Oh, it looks like there's a couple of things in here. Oh, look. This is the person that this letter is from. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's right. They had that, that's and, that kind and, of faces, yeah, by yeah, the way. Yeah, that's from. Here's our. Uh, yeah, this is this person. They right cut here. their face up. Dear J and B on the Rocks, I've been tuned into your wacky antics ever since your pilgrimage to Kentucky in Funky Young Siblings of the Midwestern Hemisphere, episode number unknown. I can't find a more diverting I can't find a more diverting show anywhere on the top dial and you just seem to get better as time progresses. At first I thought you were two two typical townies who were just extremely bored. But I now see you after repeated viewings as the brilliant and distressed anti-censorship commentators that you really are. Keep them coming. By the way, sorry for my awful handwriting. My best to you guys. Sincerely, the High Plains Drifter. Well, that's simply a, a, a fascinating, fabulous letter. So this next letter, uh, dated November 4th, this is actually also from name and address withheld upon request. Uh, Dear j and I felt compelled to write and thank you for the bold and inventive programming alternative you provide for the community at large. You are indeed the young lions of video. As Roger Ebert put it in his movie Home Companion 1993 edition, you are, quote, covering the national dream beat. I have not seen anything so far on my fruit idea. Any progress? Well, we've already talked about that. I think you should feature local brewer Russ Levitt on your show. Here is a man who makes his own alcohol. His product is so potable that he won second in the nation for his English pale ale this year. Ask to see his medal. Name and with address withheld upon request. So actually, we've had Russ Levitt on this yeah. TV show before. The iron. It's kind of ironic, yes. Um, so we're going to show you a little bit of that experience right now. Here's our beer consultant, R. Um, Russ. He is, uh, no, Russ is okay. Russ is okay. okay. What you want to do is definitely start it down the side of the glass, or else you make a tumultuous mm -hmm. mess. But okay, as you but get you, about you halfway, should... watch what I do. Then okay. I start pulling it away so that we actually create some sort of a head. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. A little much of a head this time. Yeah. But what that helps but the beer do is that it gets air in there. And okay. what an experience it was, we can tell you. Oh, uh, that was weird. Oh, man. I thought it was going to be a lot heavier. <laughs> So, um, anyway, let's move on. Okay, yeah, I'm going to get to read a piece of viewer mail myself here. This is also from Joe uh, to JMB on the Rocks. It's been hand-stamped, you'll notice as well. Hmm, and there don't really seem to be any words here. In fact, all I... Gosh, knives, guns, bottles of booze, more knives... And then all these screaming faces. This is kind of almost disturbing. And well, then look at this. Sunday. And there's, yeah, well, down here in the lower right-hand corner, we have a picture of, uh, well, that would appear to be Satan with some booze and, and a smoking cigarette. I think that is, a, that's a cigarette. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, then there's this guy with a big dick sticking out and a gun in his hand approaching a, a naked woman. 
in front of a church on Sunday. And this is obviously either the work of a sick mind or some kind of art student type who would like to like us to believe that they're a sick mind or something like that. Because because actually, you know, these are these are pretty um, these are pretty good drawings. So hey, I would just invite whoever wrote that sent this in to to send something more in because I'm interested in what's going on inside your head. The only orders we're taking now are for the book. Write to us at P.O. Box 3241, Bloomington, Indiana, 47402, as this person did. Um, th now, this, this letter is, uh, as you'll see here on the, on the postmark, is, is dated May 24th, 1993. Yes, uh, we, have been, we have fallen so dreadfully, embarrassingly behind that we're, we're catching up uh, on letters that were sent to us like six months ago. Mm -hmm. So um, we should certainly go down in the uh, annals of magnanimity for, for that one or something. Dear J&B, your show is an oasis of alcohol in a dry world. Now for the favor. I'm reading my poetry at the Waldron on Friday, June 18th. I have submitted a program proposal to BCAT. I need someone to tape the reading. How about you guys or Wyatt or Chris McElwain? Those are former camera operators of ours. Please, I don't think it will go through if I can't find a volunteer. I love the show. If you want, I'll come and read my parakeet poem. It starts with fuck, but that doesn't mean it has no social value. <laughs> Wax on, dude. Sincerely, Dennis Sipe. PPS, reply soon, please. Um, and he gives a phone number. Well, obviously we failed to, to reply soon, but um, we did, however, manage to procure a rare and valuable copy of the Parakeet poem, and it goes like this. Fuck 1990. I left Alaska to keep my fiancé. My fiancé left me because I didn't have enough money. In one week, I cracked a rib, broke a finger, and stepped on a two-inch nail. A month later, I cracked another rib. But you know, I heard this true story. A lady splinted her parakeet's broken leg with a kitchen match. She left the head on it. When the parakeet came in for a landing on the grit paper-covered bottom of its cage, it flapped into flame. And I'm sorry if you like birds. I don't have anything against them. But I think that's damn funny. J&B Smokin' Rocks, hmm, P.O. Box 3241, Bloomington, Indiana. That's us, actually. 47402 is the zip code. Um, this is from the James Garner Institute for Beef Preservation, as you can see there. So, let's see, who's this, what, what is this? The beef Preservation, now, what the fuck could that be, I wonder? I have no idea. Let's see here, oh my goodness. Eat more meat. And on the back, it says, hey, dickhead. <laughs> well, um, goodness. <clears throat> so this dog is saying, eat more meat. And what we, oh, goodness gracious. What we have here is, uh, looks like some kind of animal carcass of some sort um, hanging from a, a, a playground, from these one of these uh, swing sets. Oh, charming. Yeah. Eat more meat, it says on the back. Oh, it's old Abe again. Yeah, yeah, how lovely. Goodness gracious. Well, um, well, that person's input, whoever sent this to us, is certainly val uh, valuable and, and valued by us. This is, now, it says it's to J and B on the rocks, but the J and is crossed out, as you oh, can see there. B on the B rocks. B on the rocks. And hmm. gosh, well, I guess since it's, it's addressed just to B, I should let him do it. So I'm going to take the video camera from his hands and hand him the viewer mail. All right, well, goodness. I'll open this with all due haste and uh, find out what's inside. Dear B, you have really gotten on my shit list this time. First, I mix up in, up in smoke, just as Jay taught me. That was on a previous episode. I think it was episode 42 or 43. Yeah. And it didn't work. I thought I'd rendered myself invisible, but the women in the locker room ran away screaming anyway. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's a drink that really Don't needed a, that that that's a drink that really needed a disclaimer, and I hold you personally responsible. I guess as editor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What really frosts me is how you could go and change Jay into a turkey like that. That, it, that was also in the same episode. Yeah, yeah. we'll show you a clip a, of that as right you're, now. As you're seeing, even as we speak, yes. And then you go and eat him. That's loyalty for you. No offense, but I just don't think your B-Cat special effects wizardry can carry the show alone. 
Look at Highlander 2 or Critters and tell me if I'm wrong. Even your blushing bride, Christy Paxson, can't help you with this one, B. You're finished. That's all I have to say. <laughs> so, and, and it's signed, Pissed, Pissed, the Quiz Master. Wow. Well, what do you think of that? I, I, yes. Yeah, I guess he didn't understand that, that for the first time ever, that episode of J and B on the Rocks actually contained some fictional stuff. So, oh well, poor guy. He was confused. So, but um, but we would like to point out that that this show is normally just about cold hard reality, and we're going to show you a little bit of that right now. Okay, so you got your GREs. Okay, my GREs finally came in the mail. Now, mind you, I think th this whole standardized test is bullshit because a lot of these questions. Just frankly, I don't know how they're going to determine my intelligence from the questions because I thought most of the questions were stupid. Therefore, who cares what my answers were? Well, no, it's not an intelligence test, though, is it? It's a knowledge. Well, 40% below, 42% correct. Incorrect, 34. Omit, 0. Quantitative, 340. All right, see, I'm just really... So did you flunk or did you pass? I have no idea. 290, what's that 290? Thing? Analytical, 290 below... Well, hey, let's celebrate that. In fact, I've got a bottle of wine ready just for this occasion. Wow, wow. It doesn't say what my... So talk about mental house cleaning. Here it is. I mean, you, yeah, you, I you've was... been told what your mental house is... Oh, my, my, my let me tell you how my brain was sucked clean. It was dusted and vacuumed and, oh, I tell you, I was like brain dead after this. Wow. But, you know, like I said, it didn't say anything that mattered. Whoa! Yeah, brother. I have no idea what any of these numbers mean, or <laughs> once again proving that I am a dumbass. Okay, well, congratulations on your status as as a funky young dem dumbass of the Midwestern Hemisphere. All right, thanks. Well, you're not shaking my hand. Oh. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Dear Jay, how long do you plan to let this travesty continue? How can you sit idly by and watch this Christy Paxson upstage you and ultimately steal your glorious television program? Why, just last night, 5-4, I had to remind myself several times that I was watching Jay and Beyond the Rocks and not The Christy Paxson Show. Remember the good old days, Jay? You and B were a dynamic duo of sorts with your hilarious madcap antics. It, w it was two buddies making mischief just for the pure joy of it. You didn't need some two-bit floozy hanger-on butting her way into everything. Two's company, but three's a crowd. Face it, Jay. You're the odd man out in this nasty scenario. Paxson has weaseled her way onto the show, and now she's got B pussy whipped in the process. I've seen it happen before, and folks, it ain't a pretty sight. An urgent message for you, Jay. I say cut your losses and run while you've still got your street credentials intact. Those other two are probably in the process of putting together their own show right now. Anyway, Jay, it's always been abundantly clear that you are the real star of the show. Kid, you got talent. You got class. You got that certain je ne sais quoi. In a couple of years, I see you taking over for this Conan O'Brien geek who's got Letterman's slot on NBC, but only if you get, get out right now. I know it's rough, Jay, turning on your best buddy, but you gotta face the music. Surely you've seen what's happened here, and it must be tearing you apart. Don't put on false appearances. Tell us what you think, Jay, and be honest. And a note to you, B. And wh why don't we get B to actually read this on camera? Since I am here. Don't yeah. drop the camera. And a note to you, B. You need help. You're an alcoholic. You were drunk when you made the decision to marry, right? Get some counseling. What? I know you think you're in love, but really, why would you, one, marry someone half your height, <laughs> and two, marry someone you aren't going to be living with right away? You should wait until you can live together. Who knows? By then you might hate each other. Stranger things have happened. Sincerely, and it's signed here, Particle Butthead. Wow. Well, what do you think of that, B? Well, I think it's just silly. Viewer mail, viewer mail. Dear J and B, we think your show is both wacky, both wacky and hilarious. Misspelled hilarious. Hilarious. Hilarious, yeah. Wondering if you could research a few things for us. Thanks for the thanks to the wise old owl, we know that it takes three licks and a crunch to get to the middle of a Tootsie Pop. Some of the many pressing questions on our mind are one, 
does the light always stay on in the refrigerator, and will the penguins find their way home? Hmm. Well, uh, we'll check that in a minute. But... Okay, so the question is, does the light inside the refrigerator go out when you close the door? And I've been trying to figure that out for a while, but it, it just seems like I can never open the door fast enough to see what's going on inside there. And I figured there's only one real way to figure this out once and for all. You see, I have a video camera. I'm holding it in my hand right now, pointing it at my face. And I'm just going to put this video camera right into the refrigerator, which I have right over here, and uh, see what happens later when we watch the tape. So I'm setting the uh, video camera inside of the refrigerator right now, up here on the top shelf. And I'm going to close the door, and we'll just see whether or not this light stays on. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a, a television first. Two, what are the highs and lows of a drag queen? Um, we'll have to get somebody yeah, special we'll, for yeah, that. Yeah, we'll get somebody to tell you about that in a minute. So, um, the, so you want to know about the highs and lows of, be, of being a drag queen. Well, now I personally have never been a drag queen, although that's never to say that I've never worn a pair of women's underwear. But that's a whole nother episode. Um, I, I have, however, known drag queens, and so I can give you a little bit of perspective. Generally, I, I would say for the most part, it gives the drag queen a chance to, well, they usually really, really get high a lot, but it gives them a chance to step out of their normal character that they are. They may have been born John J. Jones, but the lights go on and all of a sudden, they're Nikita or something like that. And so they get to, you know, play a part and, and just have fun and be kooky and not have to be themselves. Um, on the other hand, a real big low, uh, I would have to say heavy persecution. Usually, um, you know, they, they are attacked whenever they've run up against some sort of bad character or whatever. But uh, that's, that's uh, probably it in a nutshell. You do get to wear makeup and pantyhose a lot. Um, and three, our last question is, how many one hits does it take to get you high? <laughs> well, gosh, um, uh, well, gosh. Since we know we, you can't demonstrate this last one on TV, we would love it if you would make us a potable brownie blues for us. Something hot, sticky, highly flammable, and containing special herbs and spices. Finger licking good. Good journey, keep smoking. <laughs> uh, and it's signed, Eluge, Iluge and Adnem. Gosh, Look, must be a actually, secret code. Yeah, it's Julie and Amanda spelled backwards. Oh, you that one was cracked the code. Out. Yep. Oh, yeah, P.S. Christy, qu question for you, too. We are natives of Bloomington as well. Please do share with us. Where is the cheapest place to get a dehumidifier? Well, uh, she'll tell you that right now. Oh, it must be time to do my thing on the dehu. I can't talk about the dehumidifier right now because, you see, you need to talk about that in the summer. Air in the winter can't hold as much water because um, the, the temperature is c cooler. But right now, it's so dry in this house, I had to get me a, a humidifier or a vaporizer. You got to have a hue to add the moisture. Now, now these doctors will try to talk you into getting a, a steam hot air vaporizer versus the cold air vaporizer, but I'm here to tell you. And the hot air, it's a pain in the ass to get it to, to create the steam. So what I have to do is I have to add baking soda. And then sometimes I add too much baking soda and then it gurgles out and that's why I have these towels all around here because it just gurgles out like this. You can see how the it's got a coating of baking soda water. Yeah, and then you get this crusty residue and I probably get it on my teeth which has contributed to my tartar buildup. So we're going to show you just how to make a potable brownie blues. Here's Jay, in fact. Yes, uh, the first thing you want to add is the brown part, you know, the, the brownie, you know, brownie blues, you understand. Rum, gold rum, is what you want. Uh, we don't particularly want to endorse this particular brand, especially because this is a pretty cheap one. Okay, so the next thing you want to add is some blue stuff. Blue Hawaiian mix is fine. Make sure you get the kind that has the swordfish in it. Um, special swordfish flavoring. Uh, we added about an ounce to an ounce and a half of the other stuff, and, and on top of this, 
you want to pour about a half an ounce of Everclear, okay? Um, this stuff's real good for you. Um, you should drink it every day before breakfast. And uh, then what you're going to do is light it. So, um, okay, there we go. It's lit. You got your potable brownie blues lit on top of the toilet back here on J&B on the Rocks. And now what you got to do is drink this while it's burning. No, wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> Man, that's just too hot. <laughs> it's like 700 degrees. Um, so well, you wait just a second. Like, you forgot the special herbs and spices. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the special herbs and spices. Well, we'll just go t deal with the special herbs and spices right now. I will be gone. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day every bread. And forgive us our death. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. They were screaming. Hey, 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 Way, Joe. Uh, no fucking way. The lights are out. Are you shitting me? We cannot become slaves to the camera. It's all for energy given. The lights out. Person to person. Lights out. Emotional sensibilities on trial here today. Just for you on Oprah. Oprah. Channel 3. Dad, Oprah. 12 o'clock. A.M. P.M. A.M. P.M. 12 o'clock. No fucking way, Joe. No fucking way. The lights are out. Are you shitting me? We cannot become slaves to the camera. It's all for the energy given. The lights. Ha ha ha!